I'm Michelle Martin. Welcome to Money and Me. So is the market that you trade in really random? Today, I invite Derek Tan, founder of Timing and You, to share with us his perspective of what cycle analysis is, how it looks at the market, and also to demonstrate his approach to analyzing five stocks. We're very excited. It's the first time that we're doing something like this. <laughs> Derek is a market historian. He says he's an old school market technician and fundamental anal analyst who closely studies how markets work, how asset classes work. And he shares his knowledge in training to people people so that we can all use historical patterns and market seasonality to be able to identify for ourselves trading and investment opportunities. Derek's site has more than 5,000 members and clients across Singapore, Vietnam, Myanmar, Malaysia, and even China. And today, he's going to be looking at the charts of five stocks live with me on the show. We're going to have them up on YouTube as well in a video format so that you can see the charts for yourself. Look at the features of the technical charts that Derek will be looking at today. And we're also going to feature some of your most requested stocks that we analyze as well. We mentioned we're giving away Derek's book. Uh, it costs 28 US dollars. I'll, I'll get Derek to tell us what his book is about <laughs> in a while. First up, welcome Derek Tan. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Michelle. Thank you for invite me, uh, inviting me up again. It's really a pleasure to uh, uh, speak to you again, as well as the yeah. audience of uh, Money FM. All right. It is great to have you on. I remember the last time you did an event with us, there were so many questions that came your oh, yeah. way, Derek. You are a Derek. fount of great information. So first up, we're giving away seven copies of your yes. book. We've been asking listeners to send us which stocks they would most like to see, to see and hear you analyze today. And I wonder if you can tell us a little of what your book looks at. Okay. Uh probably allow me to share my uh, slides. How about that? Okay, sure. Okay, so share screen. We're just waiting for Derek uh, to get his whiteboard up. Here Are you go. looking at my slides? I am indeed. Okay, so actually uh, my uh, book, uh, it's actually how high will the U.S. stock market rally before this aging bull market is finally over. So in this book, I uh, uh, forecast how high Dow Zone, uh, NASDAQ, uh, S&P 500 will hit uh, uh, before this bull market is finally over using uh, uh, fundamental reasons, using technical as well as cyclical uh, data to look at how high I think they will go. So this is all what right. all this thing is all about. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you for giving us seven copies that we're going to share with our lucky listeners today. Derek, since you're here, before we dive into some of the charts of the stocks that we're going to analyze today, and we're going through five stocks, two local stocks, yes. two tech stocks, one China tech stock. A couple of these are my listener picks as well. So thanks for that. First up, what is cycle analysis? What are we studying? Are we studying the capital cycle? Okay, so what uh, uh, cycle analysis or short form uh, CA is, is actually a field of study in analyzing recurring pattern and periodic repetition to forecast timing and turning points of different investment asset classes. That means I take a lot of historical data, all right, I combine with uh, future market data, I can do projection of where or the direction or where the future uh, uh, the, the the price of an asset class is going uh, going uh, uh, through. All right, so this is what uh, cycle analysis allow me to uh, uh, do. So uh, a lot of people out there they probably uh, do fundamental analysis or technical analysis. They are only looking at the price. All right, but cycle analysis deal with timing and turning point. It's only when you are able to combine price and time that will give you a higher probability of winning. Uh, in the in uh, so-called in uh, asset class that you are going to trade or invest in, huh? so this is what CA is all about. So, was CA effective in terms of predicting what we saw economic conditions last year in twenty twenty? Yes, in fact, uh, we, me and my uh, uh, members, my Tami and you members, and my clients, we actually managed to get out uh, in January last year in all our uh, so-called uh, equity equity position. So we escaped from the big drop in uh, last year, uh, February and March. 
uh, whereby the COVID-19 really hammered the global stock market. So we were uh, lucky, and but of course, we make an informed decision through cycle analysis, yes. And could you see what was going to happen in March where we saw some stock prices go up by 30%? Uh, yeah, correct. So so that is the power of cycle analysis. I don't know what is going to be an event, but I mm-hmm. know when the turning point is going to be. All right. I think that's very important. And since we talk about this, I think it's important that because I do cycle analysis, uh, my forecast that uh, down zone is going to hit 34,000. All right. So uh, last night, we just had a, another high in down zone. Uh, last week, S&P broke 4,000. So my next target for S&P 500 is 4,002. And I'm looking at NASDAQ heading towards 15,000. Uh, a lot of people thought that, ah, oh, this US stock market is, the valuation is too high. Ah, oh, it's probably going to crash soon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, probably not so soon yet. If you ask me, I think the bear market probably will come in the second half of this year. Not so soon yet. All my models and the data that I crunch tell me the crash is not going to come anytime soon yet, all right? Okay, not anytime soon yet. Let's go through some of the charts that um, you prepared for us. Our listeners are excited as well. Sarah Chang yeah. uh, SMS this and she's hoping that you can walk us through what you see with DBS. So DBS reported, what, 33% plunge in fourth quarter earnings. Uh, bank's net interest margin fell. It set aside allowances for potential bad loans, of course. So what do you make of DBS recently talking about a strategic foray into India and China? Um what do you see when you look at DBS's charts? All right. So uh, this is the chart of uh, DBS. I think uh, one thing we need to take note of is uh, because uh, interest rate is going to go up. Also, uh, one of the sector that's going to benefit from this rise in interest rate is going to be the financial sector. Of course, banks is going to be one of it. And uh, for DBS, I think apart from the uh, uh Good news that you shared. You just shared. I think DBS is also the first uh, company in this whole world uh, that has a crypto asset backed by a traditional fund, a, a traditional bank. So this is very exciting. All right. So DBS, this is a chart. So can you all look over here? There's a, a, a resistance of around twenty nine point zero two over here. All right. So DBS pullback. And a few days ago, it actually broke out. So ladies and gentlemen, also uh, based on technical analysis, if this bullish momentum were to continue, we probably will see DBS head higher to this orange uh, zone, uh, orange uh, color, uh, circle over here. That is about 30.36. All right. That will be the next resistance, 30.36. So if you look at a longer term for DBS in terms of charting, so the previous chart, uh, the previous charts of this, we were here, or uh, we were here. So this is the orange uh, circle. So if DBS can break above this uh, 30.36 uh, resistance, uh, it will have potential to go higher to hit the historical high over here. All right, the yellow, yellow circle over here, which is about 30.78. All right. How many years ago was that? That was is that time uh, period for that? That was in 2019 April. Okay. All right. This historical high was uh, 30.78 or mm-hmm. the historical high in April uh, 29, uh, no, sorry, 2018. Sorry. 2018. Okay. Yeah, 2018. All right. If All look, right. Okay. So uh, currently DBS 29.29 at this point in time. So you're seeing that key resistance mark of 30.26, correct? 30.36, which is 30.36. the orange uh, circle. It mm-hmm. ha- if it has momentum to go higher, then probably it may go up to 30.78, the yellow circle over here. Okay. All right, Derek, that was, that's great. Shall we move on to the next chart? Uh, also, yes. I believe our listener wanted to hear, June Lee wanted to, uh, was hoping that you could share with us what you see when it comes to Facebook. We'll discuss that in a while, but I think we have Google next. Am I right? Uh, yeah, correct. 
So let's take a look at Facebook. Uh, in fact, Maybe last night... Facebook. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Google. Uh, we'll look at Google first, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, Google. Okay. So anyway, uh, both uh, last night, both Google and uh, uh, Facebook has uh, broke out. La last night was a good night for both of them. So now, yeah. this is the chart of Google. As we can see, this uh, for the last 10-year chart, Google is in a very, very nice uptrend. All right. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are really at the tail end of this U.S. bull market. Uh, this U.S. bull market has been rallying from the last 12 years since 2009 March. Wow, look, just look at the chart of uh, Google. Is This is a stock that we want to own. All right. That is a beautiful chart. Look at that increase and that incline so steep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So so that's a long-term chart. So let's look at a uh, shorter-term chart with this. All right. Mm. Uh, so this is Google. As we can see, there's a resistance here, over here. Look at my cursor here. This yep. is about 2145.14. So, so as we can see, last night, it, had, it, it broke up so strongly with uh, increased volume. Also, this is actually a very good sign. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, not only that, look at the force index, which is an indicator that combines price with volume. Look how it has increased from uh, zero, it spikes up. So this is a, actually a very good sign over here. All right, so this breakout, uh, uh, in fact, this is what I call is it probably form a chart pattern called something like a, what we call a rectangle or a flat base. So this with this uh, broke out, potentially how high it can go is we can take the depth of this rectangle or base flat. How do we measure the depth? So the resistance here is 2145.14. The low here, the blue line over here is 199 a 1990.23. So how do we find the depth is we take 2145.14 minus 1990.23, the depth. We add on to the, the resistance level here, which is 2145.14. So potentially, potentially, mm -hmm. we may be looking at Google heading on to a 2300 level. All right, if this uh, chart pattern were to play out. All right. So even if you look at the moving average, the this green color line here, which is a 20-day moving average, the blue color line here is a 50-day moving average, the 200-day uh, moving average, this red line over here, all of them are turning up. So all of them is suggesting that hey, this bullish, there's this bullishness in Google, and with this breakout last night, it confirmed uh, 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 this uh, bullishness. And uh, if this momentum were to continue we probably will see Google heads towards 2003. Oh, very exciting. For right now, Google. it's two to, about 2218, right? Yes, correct. Mm. correct. So, so even though we've seen sort of investors look away from tech shares because of fears of inflation and yes. you know treasury bonds, you still see momentum. Yes, upwards. it's all shown in the chart itself. All right. Yeah, patience, my listeners. I know you know it's a little hard for you to follow us because we're looking at these beautiful charts, but you will too in time. We'll post this video on Facebook so you can have a close look at all these orange points and uh, chart yeah. bases that Derek is talking about. Derek Tan is my guest today. He is founder of Timing and You, and we're looking through... Uh, five stock charts to understand how someone with a background in psychoanalysis really looks at stocks. All right, so let's take a look now at Facebook. I believe uh, listener June Lee was hoping you'd pull up Facebook charts. We know that yeah. Facebook has uh, 500 million Facebook users. They always say you should invest in what you know. I think everybody uses Facebook. Uh, daily active users, about 1.84 billion um, incredible numbers, capital expenditures, amazing as well. 4.82 billion um, for the principal payments, capital expenditures, including principal payments. So how do we make sense of all this information? What are you seeing on your charts? All right. So for Facebook, this is a long-term uh, chart of Facebook. Very nice as well since it's uh, IPO uh, in 2012. It has been going up along the way. I mean, along the way, there was some correction, consolidation, but it's also at a... Uh, uh, all-time high and the important thing is ladies and gentlemen last night 
Also, uh, Facebook up three point four three percent, right? Yeah. Yes, it has a broke. It, it broke up last night as well. All right. So if you understand about a uh, chart pattern uh, in Facebook, it actually uh, last night it has actually completed what we call a cup with handle. So this is a chart pattern, a very profitable chart pattern. It's called a cup with handle. Oh, you, you guys got to be a bit uh, imaginative to have a bit of imagination. It's just how you look at a cross-sectional view of a cup. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. we have the cup with handle and it broke out very nicely last night and look at the broke breakout. It was achieved with uh, uh, so-called increased trading volume. All right, so this is something uh, 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 positive as well. So potentially, how I see Facebook is this, there's a resistance here, uh, this red line over here, which is uh, 304.67, all right? Mm -hmm. So there's a support here, which is at 244.13. Same thing, how can we find the potential price objective if we, we, we take the resistance minus the support to find the depth of the cut, all right? So that will be 304.67 minus 244.13, all right, then we add it on to the resistance of 304.67. This potentially means that uh, Facebook, based on this cut with handle chart pattern, it mm -hmm. may have a chance to rally to three, around 365.21, potentially. All right. It's if currently at 308.91. Yeah, so mm -hmm. potentially, if this bullish momentum were to continue, we may be looking at... Uh, 365.21 for Facebook, all right? But with a closer look, this is a, even a shorter term closer look at Facebook. Okay. Uh, if you notice, uh, this is what we call a, a bull flag. That means it has a big rush up, then it has a, a so-called consolidation before so I'm, look, I'm looking at, at a compressed chart of a, of a time of period, Facebook. is it? Yes, correct. So okay. this is from about last year, October, until last night. Okay. So this was last night. Also, uh, there's a chart pattern here, what we which we, uh, what we call bull flag. Also, mm -hmm. uh, how can we measure or how can we forecast how high uh, 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 Facebook may go based on this bull flag is? We, we, we can take the so-called the high here, which is 299.7, with the low here, which is uh, 255.05, this is what we call the uh, uh, flat pose, all right? Then the consolidation. So the high of 299.7 minus 255.05, we add on to the point of breakout to, to project how high uh, Facebook uh, may go based on this bull flag, uh, which in this case, it turns out to be 329.15. Also, based on the blue flag chart pattern, we are probably looking at 329.15. Based mm -hmm. on the cut with handle, we are probably looking at 365.21. If this bullish momentum were to continue. All right, so that is uh, probably what I'm looking at for Facebook. Yes. All right, I want to bring it back to the STI and look at agribusiness group Wilma International Financials and Commodities thought to be able to benefit if we see um, long-term bond rates continue the way they have been moving upwards and, you know, uh, with reopening and inflation expected, commodities expected to do well. Wilma International last done share price $5.48. They've been in the news because uh, they've inked a $150 million sustainability linked loan from OCBC. And we know that the ESG sector, you know, also projected to see growth. What do you see when you look at Wilma International? All right. Uh, before I go into Wilma International, probably I'll talk a bit about cyclically, uh, what, am I, what am I seeing? Yes, please. We are, yeah, so we are actually uh, in a commodity uh, bull run and this commodity bull run will last till 2024. All right, so we still have a couple of years to go. So inflation is definitely coming back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this time around, this commodity bull run is not because of the in, really the increase in demand. It's more because of the shortage in supply because of the 
uh, lockdowns. Also, with this uh, background information, we know that commodity is going to turn up. So let's look at the price chart of Wilma. Wilma is uh, consolidating as well. All right. So uh, in terms of uh, price chart, it may, may uh, not confirm yet, it may be forming uh, what we call a double bottom. All right. So the thing is, if Wilma can break above this uh, red horizontal resistance line, which is where the red circle is, that is about 5.64, all right? If Wilma would later on, if we can break up above 5.64, potentially how high we can see uh, Wilma will go is, same thing, we use the depth of the possible uh, uh, double bottom. The resistance here is 5.64, the support here is about 5.23. So we take 5.64 minus 5.23, we add on to 5.64. We potentially may be looking at around $6, all right, for Wilma, provided it break this uh, 5.64 resistance, all right? So we take one step back, all right? So this is a longer term view for Wilma, or Wilma. Mm -hmm. uh, over here, all right, is where I show this, this possible double bottom. Also, if we were to see uh, uh, Wilma uh, break up from a possible double bottom, Wilma may have a chance to hit higher uh, to this uh, so-called uh, uh, orange circle resistance over here, which is uh, around $6 as well. All right, same like what I forecasted based on the uh, double bottom uh, price objective. So we are looking at around 6 to 6.05, all right? Then something very interesting uh, I can share with you guys is this. Uh, I have uh, my own proprietary uh, DT7 golden numbers, a series of golden number. Uh, one of it is uh, 3.5, all right? So I discovered this uh, accidentally. I realized that uh, the first wave structure of a rebound will actually decide uh, how high the price may go. Uh, I may not have the time to go through today, but... Is this for commodities? Is this, is this just for Wilma? Or what is oh, no, no. these numbers it, referring it's to? It's for uh, uh, any, any asset classes. It can be for stocks, it can be for commodity, it can be for uh, bonds, it can be for currencies, all right? So it is a way for us to determine where may be the next resistant also how i measure this is this we can see that there's a drop in the uh, price of wilma then it went up it has a pullback then it goes up again so this is what we call a successful follow through but how can we project how high the price will go is this we take uh, b minus a which is 3.59 minus 2.83 then we multiply with my golden number of 3.5, my DD7 golden number of 3.5. Then we uh, add on to this C, which is 3.25. So what we get is about 590, around $6 as well. So B, B is a double uh, potential double bottom, uh, B the resistance over here. Be it mm -hmm. using my golden number of uh, 3.5, we probably mm -hmm. are looking at around six dollar for Wilma. If, uh, if, if, uh, very important, uh, if it can break out from this resistance of 5.65 at 5.64, where the red circle is. All right, this okay. is very important to take note. All right. Okay, well, thanks for sharing that. You have to look at these charts. We'll make sure that we get them up for you. Uh, yes. Check them out on our YouTube channel so that you can watch Derek Tan, founder of Timing, and you pretty much, um, you know, describe what he's seeing at the same time. Nothing like visuals as well. Now, I wanted to take a look at a Chinese tech stock and we decided it would be interesting to look at Xiaomi, the Chinese smartphone maker. Xiaomi has flagged rising costs from a global ship chip shortage that's been hogging a lot of news headlines the global ship shortage how that's going to affect uh, a range of businesses manufacturing cars so xiaomi reported quarterly revenue below market estimates its international business ahead jump ship even to TikTok owner bite dance. Let's look at how Xiaomi is done up 2.72% overnight to 26.45 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, this is on the Hong Kong exchange. What are you seeing uh, on Xiaomi's chart? 
All right. So Xiaomi is a very interesting stock. So a few days ago, uh, their founder uh, just announced a change in their logo from a square to a round shape. All right. So uh, be, uh, with that, they are announcing that they are going into EV, electric vehicle. So yep. uh, for the next uh, probably decade, they, are, they will be uh, venturing into EV. All right. So this is uh, Xiaomi uh, uh, since it uh, IPO. Uh, it was in uh, 2018, around July. So it has went up, as we can see. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, since uh, early this year, it has went through a so-called uh, correction. And it somehow seems to find support at this uh, blue horizontal support line here, as well as its 200-day moving average. Also, this is a long-term view of Xiaomi. Let's look at a shorter-term view. All right, so, uh, so like what, what I mentioned, Xiaomi has uh, corrected, found support at the blue horizontal support as well as a 200-day moving average. It went up, it came down, found support at the 200-day moving average again. So right now, it is over here uh, as of yesterday. Uh, yes, as of yesterday. So now, the resistance uh, over here is around 27.35 Hong Kong dollar. All right. If, if Xiaomi can break above 27.35, mm -hmm. all right, do take note uh, that Xiaomi's 50-day uh, moving average is also here. So there's actually a double reason here of this horizontal. When you say here, what is that level for just for our listeners? 27.35. 27.3, 27 okay. So we have a double resistance of uh, the red horizontal resistance as well as 50-day uh, moving average at around 27.35. So if Xiaomi is able to break up above this reason, potentially it may rally to this orange circle over here, which is around 31.38. All right. So that could be a possible next reason. If it can take out this reason, we probably may see Xiaomi hit back higher, uh, hit back to its uh, early this year high of 35.91 or 35.91 so this is a good level to wash out 27.35 taken out or sell me potentially can go up to 31.38 if this is taken out as well we may see sell me head back to the uh, this year uh, uh, early this year high of 35.91 all right so we are the critical uh, area for Xiaomi actually all right all right, five stock charts analyzed live with Derek Tan. He's a market historian, old school market technician, fundamental analysis analyst, and so generous to join us. Founder of Timing and You, Derek. Great speaking with you. Great looking at your charts. I think our listeners are going to pour over them, uh, you know, when they can't see them on YouTube. Thank you for joining yes. us. Thank you very much, Michelle. Great all speaking right. with you as always. And thank you all for listening to us here on Money and Me. Before acting on the information on Money FM, please consider if it's suitable for your own investment objectives, financial situation, and risk tolerance.